Hello everyone, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'm going to introduce you to OpenOffice Writer. OpenOffice Writer is the Apache Foundation equivalent of Microsoft Word as a editing software for creating different types of documents, possibly a report, or if you just have to write a poem or any kind of paper um, using a computer in order to accomplish that task. So OpenOffice Writer, the main advantage over Microsoft Word, in my opinion, is that it's completely free. Otherwise, the feature sets are very, very comparable, and they're both actually very good pieces of software. So we're going to be going through the absolute basics inside of OpenOffice Writer here today, uh, just to introduce you to some of the things you'll be using over and over again as you're creating documents inside of this program. So first up, you'll notice two bars down from the top in the formatting toolbar, we have a dropdown for fonts. You see it's set to Times New Roman right now. And that is the default font for pretty much anything when working inside of this program. It's a fine font, it looks very readable, but sometimes you want to change it to something else. So we already have some text typed here. And one of the things that you might want to change the font on is a header, which it would be effectively what we have here where it says lorem ipsum. So let's go ahead and change that into some different kind of font. Preferably something that also has bold, italic, and underline, which we'll get to in a second. I believe Aharoni happens to have that. So as you can see, the font changed on the lettering there, making it look a little bit different. Fonts are basically just different ways of writing a different character. So it's a different look, but the letters are still the same. Next up, another thing we could change in a header, or any text really. Uh, you might want to make the text size larger on your text so that people can read it. Sometimes 12 point font might be too small, especially if you single space it. So for the header, we'll go ahead and change that from 16 up to 20 so that it looks even larger and you can definitely tell that it's a heading or the title of a page. And uh, some things you may want to do to text include bolding um, creating or uh, making them italic or underlining them. When you make it bold, it just overly emphasizes or makes it stronger the text that you have currently selected or the text that you're about to type if you don't have anything selected. In addition to that, you can hit this button over here on the formatting toolbar or hit Control I as a key combination in order to make your text italicized. Also, you can underline it. Um, Sometimes when you're writing reports, especially if they're going by a certain formatting like MLA or APA for school, there are certain ways you have to have your text structured, especially in the uh, works cited or sources. And that's one of the times when this will come in handy. When you're just writing stuff for yourself, you can use it for a little bit of style, uh, make your text look different, or generally just to emphasize it piece of text. Like right here we'll change this word popularized and we will un, uh, we'll make it italicized. So now compared to the words around it, obviously you can see it's slanted and it's noticeable because it looks different than all the rest. Another thing you may want to do to your text is to align it to a certain part of the page. So by default it's usually aligned to the left but right now it's justified, I'm not actually sure on that reason. But if you hit a line left, it'll take every single line and move the starting letter to the left side of the page. If we make it centered, which is something you might want to do for headings, as the lower map sum is right there, it'll center every line. So there's an equal amount of space to the left of the line and an equal amount of space to the right. Uh, that's very useful for poems or just for headings and other things that you want in the center of the page. It kind of helps it stand out a little more sometimes. Also, you can align right. Uh, that's probably most useful when you're writing footers or headers, uh, so that if you want the name to appear in the top right or the bottom right, or maybe you're putting a page number, you can align that text to the far right and uh, have it appear on the right side of the page. So as you can see, we have a few words that are underlined red currently. And the reason for that is that the software thinks that it is misspelled. So there are different ways of handling that. Uh, you want to get to the spell checker, but there's different ways of getting to that. 
One is to right click on the text and going to spelling and grammar, which will open up the spell checker. Another way is to hit this icon over here where it says ABC. And as you can see in parentheses right there, it says F7 on the keyboard also launches that. So we'll do it by hitting F7. Now it'll sort at the top of the document and go all the way down until it has ignored or changed every single uh, red underlined word that we have. So right now, because lorem, lorem ipsum is in uh, Latin, it believes that it's misspelled because we're using the English language here. But we know that it's actually spelled right, so we'll just ignore it, ignore once. When you ignore once, Every time you restart the spell checker, it'll come back and still read that as a incorrectly spelled word. But if you ignore it all, as long as this document's open, the word will always be considered spelled correctly. So here we have one, popularized. That is spelled with a Z. So by choosing the option down here, we can correct that, then hit change over here to fix it. And spell check is a very useful tool. You probably knew about it already, but Whenever you're going to be submitting documents or anything professional, or even if you're still in school, to submit a project to a teacher, uh, make sure you spell check it first. They'll probably tell you over and over again there's no excuse for spelling mistakes, and really when computers will just check the English for you, there really isn't. Let's sheets. Okay. We will go ahead and ignore that one. And we'll actually just close out for the rest of the spell check. We're not really interested in finishing that up. But you do want to finish that up when you're actually writing your own documents. A couple more things we'll go into here are indenting and also to create lists, which is something you often do, especially in reports. So right now you can see that the cursor is aligned to the right. We'll change that by hitting the align left to make sure that our list sorts on the left side of the page. Hit numbering on to create a numbered list, and we'll type some words in there. Moose, monkey, cow, chicken. Okay, now we have a list that are perfectly aligned with each other, a numbered list, but what if we actually want one of those items to be a subunit of another uh, part of the list? And I'll show you what I mean right here. We can go over here to hit the increase indent button, or you can hit tab to move it over to the right. And what this implies, of course, is that mon monkey is part of the moose topic, if you were structuring this similar to a outline, which you may need to do in school. We will also create a bulleted list, which instead of using numbers, uses symbols. Um, the cases for when you want to number it or not number it vary. Usually, if you couldn't put a number to it, you might want to use a numbered list, but if it's just random stuff or not in a, any kind of sequence, you could use bulleted lists instead. So let's make this one about food. Ah, okay, uh, automatically suggested a word there. Pop, fries, okay, this is a very unhealthy food list. Hamburger. And I'll go ahead and demonstrate the increase indent button over here on the formatting toolbar and the decrease indent button. Now, the last thing we'll go into for today, since this is just an introduction, is to add a header or footer. This is something that is included on many, many documents, so I feel I should cover it. If you go to the insert menu on the left, uh, top left side of the page and go to where header or footer says, then you can choose default, which will create a lined header or a lined footer at the bottom of the top of the page. Then you have this header and footer section to uh, mess around with. As you can see, we don't have a footer because we didn't add one yet. So say we want to put the page number on the far right of every page. I'll go ahead and demonstrate a good way to do that as a bonus. There are certain special fields you can add to your documents, such as you want the program to know which page you're on instead of having to manually input it into the header or footer every single time. So fields, page number, now you see this that this text is grayed a little bit. That implies that it's a special field uh, that will respond to the data inside of your document. So by going and moving to the second page, you see automatically it put the header back in, 
and now it has a two there to imply that we're on the second page. It's very useful. Um, sometimes you want to put that in the he header, sometimes you want to put it on the footer. It just depends on what kind of document you're making. So of course I'll be getting into many more features of Open Office Writer here in the next few days. So if you have any comments, feel free to leave them down below, questions as well. And if you want to see some of those tutorials, go ahead and subscribe, and I'll try to cover everything you guys want me to cover. Thanks for watching. I've been Doc Skeleton.